This U.S. warship just trolled China. The future of war is in space. And Burger King is accused of making a racist ad. At least no one's accusing them of making a decent burger. That and more on this week's China News Headline. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. Last month, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo visited the Philippines. While there, he said the U.S. would back the Philippines in the event of any armed attack in the South China Sea, based on their mutual defense treaty. And now it seems like the U.S. is putting muscle behind that statement. This week, the U.S. sent a warship carrying fighter jets near the Scarborough Shoal. That's territory both China and the Philippines claim. The sighting was first reported by Filipino television. But on the fifth hour of sailing, everyone was roused from their naps by a new sight. An aircraft carrier not three miles away, launching and landing its planes to the wonder of the watching fishermen. Wow, that's incredible. That looked just like the Filipino fishing boat I took to the Scarborough Shoal. The ship those fishermen saw was the USS Wasp. It's reported to be carrying an unusually large number of F-35Bs. That's the latest American stealth fighter plane. But the Wasp was carrying another secret weapon, Ant-Man. Okay, look, it's not always easy to add jokes to these stories. The Wasp was sailing to annual military drills with the Philippines. It comes shortly after protests from the Philippine government over 200 Chinese ships near another disputed island. Maybe I need to go back to the South China Sea. And speaking of disputed territories, Taiwan. China is very sensitive about its territorial claims to what is essentially an entire country. So when the London School of Economics displayed this, a sculpture by Mark Wallinger called The World Turned Upside Down, some people freaked out. Why? Because China was colored in yellow and Taiwan was colored in pink, implying it's a separate country. China is very sensitive about maps, since that's how it makes a lot of territorial claims, which is why inside China there's been a crackdown on politically incorrect maps. Anyway, a group of Chinese international students, I'm sure completely independently from the Chinese consulate, complained and the UK university decided to immediately give in. But then it became international news, and now they've clarified no final decisions have been reached. Because this is a hard decision to make? Honestly though, I'm just upset they put Australia at the top. Speaking of even more territories the Chinese Communist Party is ruining, Hong Kong. Remember the umbrella movement a few years ago? I do. For 79 days, protesters, mainly students and mostly peaceful, occupied a few main roads in Hong Kong to demonstrate for democracy. Their symbol was a yellow umbrella, since they were using umbrellas to fend off the tear gas Hong Kong police were throwing at them. Clearly a menace to society. That's why nine prominent leaders of the movement have just been found guilty of causing a nuisance and inciting others to do the same. Causing a nuisance can mean up to seven years in jail. Just kidding. Each charge of causing a nuisance means seven years in jail. Hong Kong's doing fine under Chinese rule. Acting Defense Secretary Patrick M. Shanahan is warning that the next war will be won or lost in space. My gosh, lost in space, that's terrifying. That reboot was terrible. Speaking at the 35th Space Symposium in Colorado Springs, Colorado, Shanahan said, because of China and Russia's actions, space is no longer a sanctuary. It is now a war-fighting domain. This is not a future or theoretical threat. This is today's threat. But even though Russia was mentioned, Shanahan made it clear that China is the real threat. We wake up much more worried about China every day than we do about Russia in space. Long term, China is the one that we're worried about. And it's China cyber, it's China space, it's China hypersonics, it's the whole package for China. Which is so strange because I saw in the movie Valerian, which was co-sponsored by a Chinese production company, that China will lead space exploration in the future. I guess Hollywood is paving the way for the Chinese Communist Party. Speaking of space, earlier this week, the world got a look at the first ever photo of a black hole which looks like a black hole. 
But the important part is state-run China Daily would like you to please remember that none of this would have been possible without China. And also that this black hole has been part of China's territory since ancient times. And apparently, an F-35 fighter plane has gone missing. If you have any knowledge of its whereabouts, please contact Japan. Japan lost contact with one of its F-35s 84 miles off the east coast of Japan. And uh, China and Russia have a lot of naval patrols out that way, so uh, better find it quick. Tom Moore, an expert on Russia and weapons, tweeted, There is no price too high in this world for China and Russia to pay to get Japan's missing F-35, if they can. Retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant General David Deptula told Business Insider, Both China and Russia have excellent reconstruction slash reverse engineering slash copying skills, particularly the Chinese, as they are masters at it. But it might not be as bad as you think. For one, the jet's all-important software and programming would likely be hard to reconstruct given not only the likely damage from the crash and salt water in the Pacific, but also the way that the jet's sensitive systems are designed to be very hard to decipher and reverse engineer. Also, China hacked the F-35 designs years ago. See, no problem. Huawei is the Chinese telecommunications company. The United States government is warning Everyone is a gigantic national security risk. And now, Huawei has a new ally. A senior cybersecurity expert who used to work for the White House. Huawei has hired Samir Jain to lobby on their behalf. Jain used to be the Associate Deputy U.S. Attorney General. And he was also a National Security Council advisor under the Obama administration. According to the disclosure filing, He'll lobby on foreign investment, government purchasing, and security-related issues arising under the National Defense Authorization Act. And finally, yet another Western company is in trouble for using chopsticks in their ads. A New Zealand franchise of Burger King posted this video on Instagram. Eating a burger with chopsticks is hard. It's the new Vietnamese Sweet Chili Tender Crisp Burger. I am disgusted. No, not because of the ad. I mean, look at this thing. Yuck. Social media users in China demanded an apology, saying Burger King has made a mockery of Asian customs and dining etiquette. The same thing happened a few months ago over a Dolce & Gabbana ad. All I can say is, stick a fork in me, I'm done. What do you think about this week's headlines? Leave your comments below. And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you. A fan who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode by contributing through Patreon. Charlie Matsubara asks, Who would win in an arm wrestling match? Presitator versus King Chris? That's a very good question, and I'd love to get an answer to it myself. I am assuming I'm King Chris in this scenario. I've been trying to get an interview with Chinese presentator Xi Jinping since at least 2015 when I tried to meet him during his stay at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. It didn't go exactly as planned. Security told me I was banned from Waldorf Astoria for life. Now, I'm a pretty good arm wrestler. Why, I even beat U.S. Congressman Dana Rohrbacher. You know, maybe that's why Xi Jinping hasn't shown up. He's afraid I'm going to lay the smack down on him. So here's what. Xi Jinping, I know you're listening. I'm agreeing to arm wrestle you with my left arm. Whenever you're ready for that interview, I'll be waiting. Send me a fax. Thanks for your question, Charlie. And thank you to all my 50 Cent Army soldiers who support China Uncensored. It's only because of your support that we've been able to cover topics that most other media don't want to, because they prefer to get advertising dollars rather than criticize the Chinese Communist Party. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.